In 2018, Hurricane Florence hit New Bern, North Carolina, and devastated the town with $100 million of damages across the city. Barbara Taylor, a resident of the Duffyfield neighborhood, explains to WUNC 91.5 Radio that she and her family lost everything when Florence flooded their home. She says, the water was just like a river in the street. I just stood on the back porch and cried. According to the Flood Factor website, the Duffyfield neighborhood has a flood risk of six out of 10 over the next 30 years, which is categorized as a major risk. With rising temperatures, flooding in these areas can become significantly worse from storms and even includes some sunny day flooding risks. The developments of the town are not meeting the needs of those who reside there and provide little to no equitable, sustainable, or resilient housing that residents can afford. With the income level, flooding concerns, and disinvestment from the city, the Duffyfield neighborhood is in desperate need for housing that will last and can benefit the residents of the town. The definition of equity is fairness or justice in the way that people are treated. Equitable housing builds off this concept by creating housing that fits everyone's needs while keeping costs in mind. According to the Joint Center for Housing Studies of Harvard University, the basic principles of the relatively new approach urge the adoption of projects, programs, and policies that low-income and minority people shape, and that enable them to benefit from economic growth, social activities, and cultural life in their communities. Providing fair housing solutions to fit everyone starts with making change in the options that are available to non-traditional families. Duplexes, triplexes, and further forms of multifamily housing can be applied into the smaller scale of a single family development, as said by the Missing Middle Housing Program. Land use reform includes changes to zoning regulations and alters the density of housing developments. Because of limited government subsidies for public affordable housing, Currently, there are very few housing opportunities that include multiple income levels. Land use reform strives to change that. For example, Minneapolis 2040 is trying to address the shortage of affordable housing by upzoning the lots that used to only allow single family housing. Sustainable housing is defined by the United Nations World Commission as development that meets the needs of the present without sacrificing the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. Making a sustainable development involves considering the environmental effects of the houses and the residents alike. Falling under sustainability, we can incorporate energy saving techniques. Passive design considers things like sun orientation, material choice, and ventilation as simple ways to use less energy within the home. Other ways to reduce the carbon footprint of a community include providing adequate access to public transportation and making the neighborhood walkable and bikeable to necessities. By decreasing reliance on personal transportation, individuals can begin to save energy and money. Bike lanes and larger sidewalks are also proven to make communities safer. And according to the U.S. Department of Transportation, by implementing sidewalks in areas of high pedestrian traffic, it can better serve the populations who cannot drive or afford their own car. These connections can provide opportunities for community engagement too, and can make the residents feel more connected to each other. According to the Resilient Design Institute, resilience is defined as the capacity to adapt to changing conditions and to maintain or regain functionality and vitality in the face of stress or disturbance. They then define resilient design as the intentional design of buildings, landscapes, communities, and regions in response to these vulnerabilities. To be able to make a resilient neighborhood in a high flood risk area like Duffyfield, there has to be places for stormwater to go without interfering with the development. Wetlands are mainly for water storage and water purification, but when placed within a residential community, there are opportunities for it to be used as recreation space. Placing developments at safer locations and incorporating stormwater retention areas into the community's plan can keep damage to a minimum allowing the lowest lying land in the neighborhood to return to local biodiversity and to remain as a floodplain will prevent additional flooding in the more developed areas. Housing design also plays a crucial role in how residents will hold up in a flood risk zone. Land in the 500 year floodplain is tricky to build on, so choosing water resistant materials and elevating the first floor are crucial in making a home last. 
exploring some real life examples we can learn about equitable, sustainable, and resilient designs. La France Walk, located in Atlanta, Georgia, addresses issues concerning missing middle housing and the opportunities that brings. Using land use reform, this project was able to address and reconsider what it means to create housing that fits into the community while providing equitable solutions. This project took five single family lots and created duplexes, fourplexes, accessory dwelling units, and nine studios. This development also has walking paths and porches, which encourage human interaction. Blue Water is workforce housing located in Tavernier Key, Florida. The apartment complex hopes to provide more equitable housing opportunities in the area. Apartments range from one bedroom to four bedrooms, and the building footprint is created out of three individual concrete pads, reducing the price of construction. Although this is a dense housing complex, there are still community spaces and green spaces, including the stormwater retention ponds. Olson Woods in Metzger, Oregon is an infill project of clustered townhomes, wooded areas, a playground, and a community center. This development has helped address an imbalance between available jobs and housing by providing workforce housing that is convenient to employment centers. A wetland at the center of the property assists with stormwater runoff by naturally filtering it with native plants. This project has also helped to preserve the natural wildlife by conserving the tree canopies throughout the site. Erie Ellington in Boston, Massachusetts is a scattered site rental development that has three-story duplex and triplex structures. While this project is located in a middle-class area of Boston, it serves as a great example of how gentle density can be enacted within a suburban context. The main focus when designing and executing this project was material choice, energy, and water consumption. These homes have been built with cementitious siding, which is more durable and requires less maintenance than traditional vinyl siding. Each duplex or triplex shares one boiler for heat and hot water instead of each having their own. The goal for this project, regardless of scale, is to create a healthier community for the residents of Duffyfield. While we cannot plan out an entire new development, we can use our new knowledge to make suggestions on how the local government can make changes to the greater area offering benefits for the residents of the new affordable housing project and the land as a whole. Looking at the characteristics of Duffy Field and applying equitable, sustainable, and resilient design strategies to the site will allow us to do so. When we look at the FEMA 500-year flood hazard map, we can accurately predict where most of the water will sit when Duffy Field floods. This map shows the areas that would possibly be used for wetlands or recreational activities instead of development. The goal with this analysis is to find what land we should choose to protect and what land is best suited for denser housing. Through zoning changes and the application of duplexes, triplexes, and ADUs, more opportunities are available to the families that will occupy the homes. By also taking into consideration the homes themselves, they can be built with energy costs in mind and incorporate passive heating and cooling systems. When needed, lifting the first level will prevent homes from flooding. Looking at multiple sites and the block as a whole, we can increase the walkability and further include different housing types. The inclusion of green spaces or pocket parks as water retention areas will serve as a resilient strategy. Zooming out further into the neighborhood, there is an increase in connection to public transportation and it is more at the scale of the human rather than the car. The current housing in Duffyfield Newburn does not represent its individuals. The families that live there have faced a lot of adversity and it is our responsibility when designing for them to consider not just the affordability, but also the sustainability and resilience of the site. Through the process of carefully choosing the site, designing the home, and suggesting a larger scale community plan, we can meet the current needs of the neighborhood and plan for a brighter future for its residents.